ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಝೂಮ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಕುರ್ ಓವರ್ ಟು ಯು ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಶಾಲೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ ನೈನ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಲೆಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಕುರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಎಸ್ ಓನರಿ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಬಾಜ್ವಾ ಸರ್ and uh, thank you all the senior faculty members and dear residents for joining in today's program uh, today's talk is on low flow anesthesia a closed circuit and low flow anesthesia and uh, to uh, discuss this important topic we have with us sir ravi bhat sir uh, sir is uh, currently professor in sdm college of medical sciences and hospital dharwad uh, sir has been the organizing secretary and treasurer in kisa kon 2014 has around 15 publications in various national and international journals and he has been as uh, invited faculty at various conference conferences his key areas of interest are critical care and pediatric anesthesia session to chair the session we have with us professor ramakrishna reddy sir sir is currently professor in medi city institute of medical sciences hyderabad sir has been an md and dnb examiner he has around 12 publications in national and international journals he has been a faculty at various conferences quiz master in various conferences he is also the current isa national online quiz coordinator he is the current honorary secretary of isa telangana state branch uh, recently sir received isa Profic- proficiency award in 2022 isa national conference and he has an overseas experience of working at nhs england for around 8 years so with esteem privilege thank you so much sir for chairing today's session we inv- we welcome you wholeheartedly uh again yeah. i would uh, like to thank all the residents for joining in today's program if you do have any query for the speaker kindly type your query in the chat box all the queries will be taken up for the speaker at the end of the session thank you so ankur you are muted ankur unmute yourself thank you dr ankur for your kind words now i invite uh, today's speaker dr ravi bhat for his presentation on low flow anesthesia uh, good evening sir good evening dr ravi please yes sir am i audible sir shall i start yes, yes. the presentation yes, yes, sir. yes sir thank you sir thank you sir good evening i am dr ravi but uh, today i am presenting a topic on low flow anesthesia i thank the uh, isa national secretary dr bajwa sir for giving me this opportunity the last week the i hope the class was on anesthesia breathing system uh, you have learned that in the uh, previous class the uh, fresh gas flow required for vein system vein circuit is 100 ml per kg it amounts to about 5 to 6 liters per minute of fresh gas flow hey yeah, bossa matra bada sorry for the disturbance do you really need that much of fresh gas flow or are all the anesthetic agents given are really absorbed by the tissues we will see with the high fresh gas flow more anesthetic drug is del- delivered than being taken up into the tissues the amount of isoflurane delivered is about 4.5 fold more than that is taken up by the tissues so 80% of delivered volatile anesthetic is waste 
using a high fresh gas flow. You can see in this graph, sevoflurane at a at three point seven percent concentration at six liters per minute of fresh gas flow, and the violet line represents the isoflurane at three percent. At six liters per minute, at the end of eighteen minutes, the uh, delivery and up there is a huge gap between delivery delivered anesthetic and the anesthetic taken up by the tissues. So much gas is wasted. But if you reduce the flow to one liters per minute, the gap between delivered anesthetic vapor and the anesthetic taken up by the Tissues almost matches. That's why in low flow there is no wastage of fresh gas flow. Uh, this uh, uh, this is not a new concept. In 1850 only, Sir John Snow he had uh, published a paper on narcotism by inhalation of vapors in London Medical Gazette. He, it follows a necessary consequence of this mode of excretion of a vapor that if it is exhalation by breath could in any way be stopped, its narcotic effects ought to be much prolonged. Here, narcotic effects means the anesthetic effect of the uh, uh, inhalation agent can be prolonged if there is rebreathing. Uh, coming to the history on low flow anesthesia, in 1924. Waters to and flow system was developed to avoid CO2 rebreathing. In 1930, Brainsword introduced circle system. The circle system absorbs the carbon dioxide from the expired gas, and it gives back the uh, uh, expired gas to the in, in, uh, on the next inspiration. In 1952, Holtz et al. showed you can reduce the flows to one liter per minute with the use of circle system. In 1954, a potent inhalation agent, halothane was discovered. In 1974, virtue showed that flows can be reduced to 500 ml per minute. This is uh, in short a history. This is in 1850, John Snow, he showed the nar narcotic the rebreathing of inhalational agent can reduce the narcotic uh, inhalation anesthetic requirement. Uh, Ralph Waters to and fro canister. 1936 is the development of circle system. In uh, 1952, for halothane, uh, the, there is a need for high flow stagnation and low flow concept because of the uh, very costly uh, halothane at that time. We have the modern vaporizers and we have modern anesthesia machines with all gas monitoring and accurate vaporizers and accurate flow meters. Even we have a electronic control of gas flow and electronic control of vaporizer in some of the modern anesthesia machines like G Aspire. So what is low flow anesthesia? Fresh gas flow less than alveolar ventilation can be called as low flow anesthesia. However, there is no universally accepted definition of low flow anesthesia. Baker's in his paper in Anesthesia Journal classified fresh gas flow as uh, medium flow is one to two liters per minute. Low flow anywhere between 500 to 1000 ml per minute of fresh gas flow as low flow, 250 to 500 ml per minute fresh gas flow as minimal flow, and about 250 ml per minute fresh gas flow as metabolic flow. In metabolic flow, we are giving only 250 ml of fresh gas flow. So we are giving only oxygen because our body needs 250 ml of oxygen per minute. We are not giving any other gases except pure oxygen and inhalational agent in metabolic flow. The metabolic flow requires closed 
system majority of what we are using with a scavenging system is not the closed system it's only circle system i will explain it in later why there is an increasing interest in low flow anesthesia the low flow in, with the use of low flow anesthesia we can reduce the cost of the expensive vol uh, volatile agents this uh, yeah, for example the cost of silver fluorine of 250 ml bottle is around 8000 rupees so if you reduce the flow we can reduce the cost of the agents the nitrous oxide and other inhalational agents they contribute to the greenhouse effect they damage the ozone layer and contributes to the greenhouse effect so they cause environmental pollution if there is no proper scavenging system they also cause of theater pollution now we have a breathing system without leak we have gas monitoring we have carbon dioxide absorption units and we have advanced machines so everyone should practice low flow anesthesia what are the advantages of low flow anesthesia the physiological are it preserves heat and humidity of the inspired gas so it improves mucociliary clearance it reduces the accumulation of dried airway secretions low flow is economical it reduces anesthetic gas consumption there is a significant savings in the form of 60 to 75% reduction in cost of volatile anesthetic agents so when the, when you use high flow of 5 liters per minute the percentage of rebreathing is zero but if you use a flow of 1 liter per minute there is 86% rebreathing of the expired gases and in the minimal flow it is about 97% in closed circuit is 100% rebreathing of the expired gases i told about the cost reduction you can see in this graph this is fresh gas flow of 4.5 liters per minute and it is flow of 0.5 liters per minute the cost for two hours of another duration of anesthesia you can see in this it is 43 and it is 9 almost it uh, saves you about 75% of the cost on inhalational agent it is it saves the environment if you use low flow the reduced flow of volatile agents and nitrous oxide will prevent the damage of earth's ozone layer and they reduce the greenhouse effect also if there is no proper scavenging system these gases will be in the theater only if you use low flow you are we will be reducing the theater pollution so during an average working day each anesthesiologist administering nitrous oxide or desflurane can contribute to carbon dioxide equivalent of more than 1000 km of car driving please remember this every time you want to use high flow please remember you are contributing to the environmental damage if you use high flow anesthesia professional we decide the fresh gas flow so we are directly responsible for the environmental impact of anesthetic vapors and gases the nitrous oxide workplace concentration is about 120 ppm with 2.5 liters fresh gas flow and it with uh, 0.5 liters it is 29 ppm the uh, nitrous oxide has health hazards like it can deplete the vitamin b12 concentration and it can lead to if there is very uh, already patients who have uh, decreased b12 it can lead to 
spinal cord degeneration. That's why uh, by uh, using low flow, we are protecting the health of the other healthcare workers in the operation room. How can we deliver low flow anesthesia? There are semi-closed rebreathing systems and closed rebreathing system. The semi-closed ones are the circle system with scavenging system. Here we use low flow anesthesia, fresh gas flow of 1 liters per minute or minimum flow anesthesia of 0.5 liters per minute. So whatever the extra gas is, exhausted through the scavenging system. In the, uh, the commonly used uh, circle system, we should not say it as a closed system. It is a semi-closed rebreathing system. The closed rebreathing system is the one where the fresh gas flow is equal to gas volume taken up by the patient. So the most advanced machines with electronic flow control and electronic control of the vaporizer, they deliver fresh gas flow is equal to gas volume taken up by the patient. That is the complete closed rebreathing system. What are the requirements for low flow anesthesia? We should have a gas monitoring system providing inspired and end tidal concentration of agents. Also, monitoring the oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration. Monitoring of the oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration is mandatory. But if you don't have agent um, concentration monitoring, you can do low flow anesthesia, but you should do a bit of mathematical calculations knowing the uh, time constant and everything. If you have a entidal co concentration, you can look at the entidal concentration and you can easily play with the flow meters and dial concentration and you can achieve the required MAC. We should uh, it require the low flow anesthesia requires flow meters calibrated to flows down to 50 ml per minute. We should have a leak proof circle breathing system and airway devices. Suppose we are using LMA, can we do low flow anesthesia? You can do low flow anesthesia provided there is LMA is tightly fitting and there is no leak. If there is a leak in the uh, LMA, leak around the LMA, uh, the, you cannot do low flow anesthesia. We should have vaporizers capable of delivering high concentrations and we should be calibrated to be accurate at low fresh gas flow. The breathing system should have very minimal reserve volume so that you can reduce the time constant. I will explain the time constant in the subsequent slides. Yes, these are the requirements of the low flow. This is a bellows type of ventilator. You can know if there is a leak in the breathing system or in the airway. If there is a leak, bellows will not touch to the top during expiration. We have the flow meters calibrated down to 50 ml flow per minute. Uh, the first column we will have the uh, it can be used for low flow. It's only up to the 500 ml uh, caliber every 50 ml. It's calibrated up to 500 ml. Then we have the vaporizers which deliver the accurate gas uh, vapor concentration even at low flows. Okay, fresh gas monitoring, oxygen, air, nitrous, and you can end tidal gas concentration. The breathing system should have minimal internal volume. Nowadays, canisters are less than one liter volume. So that uh, detects some uh, uh, care station uh, system. Its uh, breathing system volume is only 4 liters. So it will help in reducing the time constant. The leakage in the breathing system should not exceed 100 ml per minute. 
the anesthesia ventilator should have fresh gas flow compensation to deliver accurate tidal volume these are the requirements for low flow anesthesia so let us look into some of the theoretical aspect of the low flow anesthesia before uh, going to how we conduct low flow anesthesia so in the low flow anesthesia the expired gas after going through the circle system uh, and removal of the carbon dioxide will be reused so that we can reduce the fresh gas flow what is circle system the the, the circle system consists of unidirectional valves inspiratory and expiratory unidirectional valves and a y piece and reservoir bag or ventilator and adjustable pressure limiting valve the uh, carbon dioxide absorber and fresh gas inlet well, it's commonly asked question where you should where should be the carbon dioxide absorber in the circle system it can be placed anywhere between the two unidirectional valves it should not be after the unidirectional valve it should be before the unidirectional valve it can be after the uh, reservoir bag or it can be before the reservoir bag but it should be between the two unidirectional valves so the essential components are soda lime canister unidirectional valves fresh gas reservoir bag apl valve and low resistance tube this is a bellows type of ventilator in inspiration this is a bag and ventilator selector switch this will isolate the uh, reservoir bag when uh, during inspiration the ventilator drive gas pushes a bellows and tidal volume will be delivered the gas passes through the carbon dioxide absorber also fresh gas Uh, whatever we keep will also flow through it has pre fresh gas a compensation mechanism the inspiratory valve opens during inspiration as the expiratory valve is closed fresh and receives the inspiratory gas during expiration inspiratory valve is closed the expired ga gases pass through the Uh, they uh, they push the bellows up and uh, even the fresh gas flow will flow into the uh, uh, expiratory limb all the gases pass through the circle absorber this is early expiration during late expiration whatever the excess gas will be vented through the exhalation valve into the scavenging system if you have kept a uh, flow of 4 liters in circle system the excess gas will be vented through the exhalation valve now uh, this is a uh, piston type of ventilator here the fresh gas decoupling valve will be there this fresh gas deep coupling valve will uh, uh, isolate the it will uh, direct the fresh gas flow during inspiration to the reservoir bag that's why in the drag uh, the, the dragger anesthesia machines uses this fresh gas decoupling technology and the reservoir bag moves with uh, collapses and expands with inspiration and expiration because of this fresh gas decoupling technology and piston type of ventilator so the important component of the uh, low uh, low gas uh, low flow is soda lime carbon dioxide absorber so what are the components of the soda lime and what are the reactions that happen when uh, during carbon dioxide absorption the component of the soda lime are potassium hydroxide about 2.9% sodium hydroxide 4% water content is 15 to 16% and the remaining will be calcium hydroxide it's about 80% is a calcium hydroxide 
the so uh, soda uh, carbon dioxide absorption capacity is almost 20 liters per 100 gram of so, uh, soda lime the usual canister nowadays contain 800 to 900 grams of soda lime the carbon uh, dioxide in the expired gas combines with the, combines with the water content in the soda lime to form carbonic acid h2co3 h2co3 combines with sodium hydroxide to form sodium bicarbonate and water uh, similarly uh, the uh, carbonic acid combines with the potassium hydroxide and forms potassium carbonate plus water sodium carbonate uh, sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate combines with calcium hydroxide to form sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and calcium carbonate the, the last product is the calcium carbonate the sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide act as a catalyst in carbon dioxide absorption reaction so they combine with by uh, carbonic acid but at the end they are regenerated so they act as a catalyst the first reaction in uh, carbon dioxide absorption is neutralization reaction that involves formation of uh, carbonic acid from carbon dioxide and water the, so, uh, the uh, sodium and uh, hydroxide and potassium hydroxide act as catalyst to speed up the formation of carbonates calcium hydroxide forms the calcium carbonate which in, it is insoluble and in it is a insoluble precipitate soda lime is exhausted when all calcium hydroxide have become carbonates i told the composition of the soda lime now we have one more component called the barrel lime it contains 70% calcium hydroxide and 10% barium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide 4.6% it does not contain sodium hydroxide water content is approximately 14 to 16% in every carbon dioxide absorbent one more interesting is the amsorb it contains only calcium hydroxide it does not contain potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide it contains uh, 14% water so, we, uh, by, uh, so it does not contain potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide that's why there is a less generation of carbon monoxide and compound a this is the advantage with amsor in india we major, majority we use soda lime this is about the circle system and carbon dioxide absorber now we will come to the time constant what is time constant this time constant describes the time taken for changes at the vaporizer dial setting that lead to a corresponding change of the gas composition in the breathing system and at the patient airway we are interested in the anesthetic agent delivered to the patient and we are interested in the partial pressure at the alveoli which reflects the partial pressure at the brain that is the site of action so a time constant can be calculated using conway's formula i repeat the time constant it describes the time taken for changes at the vaporizer dial setting that lead to a corresponding change of the gas composition in the breathing system and at the patient airway it is calculated by system volume divided by uh, fresh gas volume minus volume uh, taken up by the patient simply we can remember time constant is system volume divided by fresh gas flow with uh, the system volume we can take as 8 liters 6 liters of the breathing system plus 2 liters of frc if your breathing system is only 4 liters we can add 2 liters of frc and it becomes total system volume is 6 liters so if you are using a fresh gas of 4 liters uh, and your system volume is 8 liters the time constant is 2 minutes is one con time constant sufficient to make the changes at the patient end no you can see here in non linear process it takes three time constants 
to complete 95% of the process. So whenever you change the dial setting, it takes three time constants to be effective at the patient's alveoli. So we compare uh, uh, using high and fresh gas flow, what is the time constant, okay? Now uh, uh, the system volume is eight liters and I'm using a fresh gas flow of six liters. The time constant is 1.3 minutes. Uh, for three time constant, it is four minutes. So if I increase the uh, dial concentration of isofluorine from one to 3%, it takes four minutes to uh, uh, change the composition at the patient end. The, three, uh, the MAC will increase only after four minutes if I use six liters flow. But if I use one liter flow, what happens in the low fresh gas flow? The time constant is eight divided by one, it is eight minutes. For three time constants, it is 24 minutes. So if I change the uh, anesthetic agent concentration from one to 3%, it takes 24 minutes for change in composition at the patient end. So this is the, uh, this may be one of the disadvantage of low flow anesthesia. We cannot change the anesthetic concentration very rapidly. How these anesthetic agents are taken up by the tissues? When you give anesthetic agents, they, it reaches the alveoli. From alveoli, it's taken up by the pulmonary capillary blood, depending on the gas partition coefficient. Uh, this is the, they enter the vessel group first, they equilibrate rapidly, then it enters the muscle group, then lastly, the fat and bone compartment. The fat and bone compartment, it may take almost 24 hours to equilibrate with the uh, other compartment. So practically, we, we can neglect the fat and bone compartment. We can only consider a vessel rich group like heart, brain, kidney, and muscle group for up to a differential uptake of agents. This is uh, showing how the rise of partial pressure will be there. This is the rise of partial pressure of the inhalation agent in the circuit. This is, it almost, uh, it will be, uh, I will explain the what are the factors uh, that affect. This is the uh, partial pressure in the alveoli and the CNS, they are almost parallel. This is the muscle group and this is the fat group. Muscle and fat group, uh, muscle group, and fat group takes a more time to equilibrate. And what are the factors affecting alveolar uptake of gases? The factors affecting the inhaled volatile anesthetic concentration are the circuit volume. More the circuit volume, it takes more time. We have seen it with the uh, time constant. And also the set inspired concentration of volatile agent. Uh, the limit here is, uh, the uh, dial setting on the vaporizer is approximately four times the MAC of the agent. So we have maximum we can give 5% of isofluorine and we can give 8% of sevofluorine with the available vaporizers. So even if you give uh, uh, keep 5% uh, isofluorine concentration and if, uh, if you keep a low fresh gas flow, you can't deliver the required quantity of isofluorine in the, uh, which, uh, in the initial period, there will be rapid uptake into the tissues. We cannot match the rapid uptake. A second factor uh, from uh, circuit with alveoli, it is uh, alveolar ventilation. Alveolar ventilation is more, there, uh, there is a rapid rise in alveolar tension. Uh, then we have the concentration effect with the nitrous oxide. I think you have already learned it. The, uh, from alveoli to the uh, uh, blood, it is governed by the blood gas partition coefficient. The agents with uh, low blood partition, uh, gas partition coefficient, the concentration rises rapidly and cardiac output and alveolar and uh, 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 blood gradient. These are the factors 
but that govern the alveolar uptake of the gases oxygen uptake is calculated by the brodie's formula oxygen uptake per minute is equal to 10 into body weight plus the power 3 by 4 if you simplify it clinical purpose the oxygen consumption per minute is calculated by 3.5 multiplied by body weight in kg for a 75 kg man approximate oxygen consumption is 250 ml per minute the uptake of oxygen remains fairly constant irrespective of the time of anesthesia so our body needs continuously 250 ml of oxygen per minute nitrous oxide is not metabolized in the body the uptake of nitrous oxide is determined by the alveolar cap capillary partial pressure difference it is calculated by the severinghaus exponential function the nitrous oxide uptake is equal to 1000 to the uh, into uh, trying to the power minus 1 by 2 so the uptake of nitrous oxide is inversely proportional to the time as the time progresses the uptake of nitrous oxide decreases here t is the time since the nitrous oxide is started volatile anesthetic uptake is calculated by the h lowest formula the volatile anesthetic uptake is equal to desired mac into blood gas partition coefficient into cardiac output divided by log logarithm of time or the multiplied by t to the power minus 1 and half so here also volatile anesthetic uptake decreases with time it is uh, also it depends upon the uh, uptake as well as metabolism of the anesthetic different volatile anesthetics have different metabolism we have to look into the metabolism also while delivering the volatile anesthetics while nitrous oxide is not metabolized in the body the rate of anesthetic uptake decreases approximately at the square root of delivery time we can calculate initial uptake of isoflurane we can calculate using the formula it uh, lowest formula cardiac output 5 liters blood gas partition coefficient of nitrous uh, isoflurane is 1.4 into mac 1.2 that is 0.0128 atmosphere is equal to the initial uptake of isoflurane is 90 ml the uptake at 4 minutes would be half of the initial rate that is 45 ml uptake at the uh, 9 minutes will be 30 ml per minute this so how we can calculate how much nitrous oxide is required at various time intervals so we have to deliver 90 ml of isoflurane vapor or 0.54 ml of liquid isoflurane so if the at a maximum vaporized setting of 5% requires 1800 ml per minute of fresh gas flow initial that's why we have to use high fresh gas flows in the initial period then only we can switch to low flow anesthesia this is a blood gas solubility of various anesthetic agents and metabolism cefluorine is about 2% resfluorine is less than 0.1% and isofluorine is about 0.2% this graph shows the total uptake of gases and in the low flow and minimal flow anesthesia the oxygen uptake is constant you can see after 15 minutes the volatile anesthetic uh, uptake also decreases it's almost uh, a constant uptake after 20 30 20 minutes of anesthesia the nitrous oxide uptake is initially high about 1000 ml then it gradually decreases and fairly it uh, stabilizes to about 100 to 200 ml per minute this is low flow anesthesia 1000 ml per minute this is 
minimal flow energy ratio about 500 ml per minute or the exhaled gases contain carbon dioxide they are absorbed by the soda lime in the absorbent they also contain oxygen nitrogen nitrous oxide volatile anesthetics in different proportions they mix with the fresh gas flow they dilute the volatile anesthetic so there can be decrease in the volatile anesthetic concentration what uh, what we kept on the vaporizer may not be delivered to the patient because of the dilution of the uh, fresh gas with the expired gases there can be a theoretical possibility of delivery of hypoxic mixture because nitrous oxide is not metabolized over the period of low flow anesthesia nitrous oxide accumulates in the circuit and there is increase in the nitrous oxide concentration how i initiate the low flow anesthesia the pre medication we can give the usual pre medication we have to do the proper pre oxygenation to ensure adequate denitrogenation we uh, induction can be performed according to the usual practice i don't use nitrous oxide at the time of induction i give only uh, oxygen and if required volatile agents i induce the patient with propofol once after uh, intubation my aim will be to achieve a entidal anesthetic concentration of 0.8 into mac of the agent Well, isofluorine or cofluorine, whatever the corresponding mac, I will achieve. I ensure adequate denitrogenation. We will do proper pre-oxygenation. I also uh, my aim is to avoid gas volume deficiency. I use high flows during the initial phase, initial phase, uh, because it will reduce the time constant and better denitrogenation. Uh, in the initial phase we can achieve the required mac by four different ways one is use of high flows for a short time you can use a high pressure gas flow of about 4 liters per minute with 1.4 liters of oxygen and 3 liters of nitrous oxide so the vaporizer setting for halothane is 1 to 1.5% isofluorine 1 to 1.5% cofluorine 2 to 2.5% and desflurane if you have it is 4 to 6% in the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes an expiratory concentration will be achieved corresponding to about 0.8 mac the nitrous oxide mac of about 0.6 uh, will uh, the added mac will give a total mac of 1.3 that is required uh, that is sufficient for the surgical incision low flow anesthesia the initial phase should last for minimum 10 minutes in minimal flow it should last for about 15 minutes if you have a entidal gas monitoring you can look at the uh, mac or the entidal anesthetic concentration and you can titrate the flow and the dial concentration uh, the second method is the use of free feed circuit uh, for i uh, use uh, ben circuit for pre oxygenation and intubation uh, at the uh, same time the uh, the circles uh, the circles uh, system will be fitted with a test lung and the entire circuit is filled with the gas mixture of the desired concentration so following intubation the patient is connected to the circuit thereby ensuring rapid achievement of the desired concentration of the circuit the 4 minutes what we use Four to six minutes of intubation, uh, of pre-oxygenation. In that time, the your circuit is will be filled with desired mixture of gases. This is a pre-filled circuit. Third one is the use of large doses of anesthetic agents. Here, uh, the usual requirement of anesthetic agent is approximately four hundred to five hundred mL of vapor in the first ten minutes. the average need of is 40 to 50 ml of vapor per minute during the first 10 minutes you can set the uh, dial setting of uh, isofluorine to 5% with a fresh gas flow of 1 liter per minute and you can achieve the required mass of 500 ml of 
vapor in 10 minutes can be delivered. However, you should not forget to uh, decrease the concentration of the anesthetic uh, agent after 10 minutes. One more is the injection technique. So, uh, one ml of halothane produces two to six ml of vapor. One ml of isoprene produces 196 ml of vapor. So, the requirement of about two ml agent in the initial 10 minutes can be injected in small increment into the circuit. Oh, you should not ever uh, never exceed one ml at a time. You can inject small aliquots. The exact dose you can calculate. Priming dose is equal to desired concentration into FRC plus circuit. So these are the four techniques of achieving the desired MAC. Am I audible? Sir, audible, sir. Okay, okay, I will continue. Thank you. Uh, the one is use of high flow for a short time of 10 to 20 minutes, pre-filled circuit, large doses of anesthetic agent boluses, and injection of liquid vapor into uh, liquid anesthetic agent into the anesthesia breathing circuit. These are the four techniques of achieving the desired MAC initially. So, what is gas volume deficiency? Initially, the, uh, we have seen in the graph, the gas uptake is high, initial, very initial period of the anesthesia. Uh, it is for 10 to 15 minutes for low flow and 15 to 20 minutes for minimal flow. If we would reduce the fresh gas flow before stabilization of uptake, that during the high uptake phase, the fresh gas cannot compensate for the uptake resulting in gas volume deficiency. What happens if there is a gas de uh, volume deficiency? One, if a, a patient is breathing spontaneously, there can be change in ventilator pattern due to inadequate depth of anesthesia or there can be decrease in the tidal volume. This is a patient, black line represents a weight of 90 kg, dotted line, patients weighing 50 kg. This is a violet line represents a fresh gas of 1 liter, red line 0.5 liters per minute. This is the total gas uptake in the initial phase, high gas uptake phase, 1,400 and it, uh, over the 10 minutes, it reduces to 600 to, uh, between 600 and 700 ml. But if you reduce the uh, flow to 500 ml, there is a gas deficiency. And this is the initiation of low flow. The, in the things to remember in the initiation of low flow is achieving the MAC desired for the patient so that there won't be any awareness or movement to the surgical stimulus and avoiding the gas volume deficiency. The initial, uh, low, uh, initial phase should last for 10 to 15 minutes for low flow and 15 to 20 minutes for minimal flow. In the maintenance phase, what happens in the maintenance phase? We can reduce the fresh gas flow to uh, 1 liter in uh, uh, low flow and 0.5 liters in minimal flow. There is a rebreathing re of uh, gases. <coughs> As the rebreathing increases, oxygen percentage decreases because of the dilution effect. Because in our body, oxygen consumption is constant. So, what we should do in the maintenance phase? We should keep minimum 50% oxygen for low flow anesthesia and keep 60 to 70% oxygen for minimal flow anesthesia. And we should, minimum FIO2 of 30% should be maintained. If the FIO2 falls below 
this is what we should do so uh, i already told the low flow on a session 50% uh, fio2 for low flow and 15 60% for minimal flow monitor the fio2 continuously you should be, a low flow requires vigilant monitoring if fio2 falls below 30% volume then increase the o2 flow by 10% of the total gas flow and decrease the nitrous oxide flow by the same value you repeat it every time if there is a fio2 falls below 30% low flow on a session the o2 flow must be increased by 100 ml per minute and in minimal flow you can increase the o2 flow by 50 ml per minute and same amount you should reduce the nitrous oxide flow so uh, again i told this is the uh, uh, low flow in a 90 kg weight patient and low flow in a 50 kg weight patient the red line is for low flow 90 kg blue line low flow 50 kg this uh, the dotted lines are for the minimal flow so what happens at the end of one and half hours in the minimal flow in a 90 kg patient this is the fio2 the fio2 falls below 30% this is because of the consumption of the oxygen and the dilution effect of the expired gases so we should be very careful and we should increase the oxygen flow and decrease the nitrous oxide flow i told already the nitrous oxide consumption decreases over the time after equilibration and the rebreath fraction increases the also there is a dilution of volatile anesthetics in the fresh gas by addition of exhaled gases so if you keep a vaporizer dial setting of 1% the at the end of the uh, at the alveoli patient may not receive 1% on an anesthetic concentration because of the dilution effect so you may increase it as a dial concentration little 0.5% or 1% higher than the required if you are keep your routine for high flow if you are keeping isoflurane at 0.81% for low flow you keep it 1.5% the uh, uh, metabolism of volatile agents i already told how you are going to change the anesthetic depth during the maintenance phase uh, because if you keep your circuit volume is uh, uh 6 to 8 liters and your uh, flow is 1 liter your time constant is 24 minutes so uh, there is surgeon is requesting for low flow uh, hypotension and you want to increase the anesthetic depth what you should do you have one, one thing is you can increase the uh, flows to 3 to 4 liters for 4 to 5 minutes and little bit or you can increase the uh, dial setting to the maximum and you can uh, slightly increase the fresh gas flow also to achieve the concentration uh, here uh, i have kept the vapor uh, sivoplon vaporizer to the 8% you can see that fi is 7.8 but et concentration is 5.3 because the flow is only 1.5 liters that's why Uh, it takes more time to achieve the desired concentration in low flow so uh, if you want to change the depth suddenly you have to increase the flow or you can increase the dial concentration if you have a intertidal gas monitoring all these things will be very easy you can look at the intertidal concentration and you can do the things what alarm settings you should do inspired oxygen concentration lower limit is 30% disconnection alarm and you can also set upper alarm limit for the agents uh, so that uh, you uh, if you forget to uh, decrease the dial concentration the alarm will remind you about the uh, vaporizer setting 
what you should do during this is a maintenance phase then we recovery from anesthesia we have a long time constant that lead to slow reduction in concentration of volatile anesthetic agents during the recovery uh, similar to the context sensitive half time so one is change over to high pressure gas flow or the switching of vaporizer early these two things can accelerate the wash out of anesthetic agents the costing is the switch of the vaporizer long the costing is the switch of the vaporizer 15 minutes prior to the end of the surgical procedure maintain a fresh gas flow of 0.5 to 1 liters per minute there you can uh, assist the patient's breathing by manual ventilation or sim or pressure support mode once the wash out of anesthetic gases then you can increase the uh, pure oxygen flow to 5 liters per minute before extubation this is the cost in the costing you are switching off the vaporizer 15 minutes prior to the end of the surgical procedure you are maintaining the fresh gas flow rate of 0.5 to 1 liter per minute for 5 minutes before extubation you can increase switching to the pure oxygen flow one more thing what you can do is if you have the next case also you can use a vein circuit for extubation you can uh, as uh, 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 close to the circle system so that the desired co composition of the gas will be there in the circle system what are the disadvantages of low flow it is not suitable for short duration of surgery like ind it takes hardly 15 to 20 minutes the initiation of the low flow only takes 15 to 20 minutes so it is technically theoretically it's not possible to do the low flow in short duration surgery it needs investment for advanced equipment the machine advanced machines will cost 15 to 20 lakhs the gas monitoring system with agent monitoring will cost about 4 lakhs continuous vigilance and frequent flow adjustments are required there is a possible accumulation of trace gases in the system like carbon monoxide acetone ethanol and compound a <laughs> so the carbon monoxide the desflurane and isoflurane react with the carbon monoxide mostly with the barrel with the, mostly with the barrel line they produce carbon monoxide with barrel line but barrel line is not used in india the co fluorine reacts with soda line to form compound a it causes acute tubular necrosis these are studied in rats the fda suggests lower limit of fresh gas flow to 1 liter per minute with co fluorine anesthesia but there is no such limit in uk <coughs> uh, uh, in uh, with fresh gas flow of 1 liter per minute and 1 uh, mac of uh, co fluorine the uh, uh, compound a developed will be about 20 ppm per hour so even if you use its uh, low flow for 10 hours uh, the uh, compound a concentration will be less than the toxic one so you can use safely low flow anesthesia for co fluorine also even in patients who are having renal insufficiency or chronic kidney disease there is a uh, theoretical risk of hypoxic gas mixture and inadequate anesthetic gas concentration due to dilution effect in low flow anesthesia how it needs vigilant monitoring can we do low flow anesthesia with oxygen and air as mixture of carrier gas yes we can do uh, there is no gas volume fluctuations because of there is no concentration effect or second gas effect with the nitrous oxide so uh, but uh, not using nitrous oxide does not uh, accelerate the process of does not accelerate the process of shorter high flow phases we can use oxygen and air mixture as carrier gas it's very simple we don't have to do the complex calculation for the nitrous oxide we can we have to do the calculation only for the inhalational agent with oxygen and air mixture so what are the factors that contribute to the carbon monoxide production it's more with the desflurane if the absorbent is dry there is a more carbon monoxide formation if you leave the uh, gas flow on with high flow of 6 liters and 
uh, for a uh, duration of overnight, then the absorbent will be dried. So this dried absorbent with uh, uh, water content less than 2% increases the formation of carbon monoxide. Barrel lime produces more carbon monoxide. The increased temperature in the uh, soda, uh, soda lime increases the production of carbon monoxide. Higher anesthetic concentration and low pressure gas flow increases the production of carbon monoxide. So you can see in the graph, this is the uh, carbon monoxide uh, concentration parts per million. It's more with the desfluorine and least with the isofluorine. So we should be vigilant during uh, low flow anesthesia. There should not be any leaks or disconnections. So how you are going to detect leaks and disconnections? One is continuous monitoring of the bellows, the airway pressure, carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide graphs, inspired and expired tidal volumes, various alarms. Very important is the vigilant anesthesiologist. So I have covered the initiation, maintenance, and recovery of low flow anesthesia. The take home message is low flow anesthesia techniques are beneficial for the patient by improving pulmonary dynamics. There's a reduction in anesthesia gas consumption, results in significant savings up to 75%. There's a decrease of greenhouse gas emission and lower impact on the ozone layer. So low flow anesthesia is beneficial to the patient, beneficial to the atmosphere and beneficial to the healthcare workers in the operation room by reducing the uh, inhalation of the volatile anesthetic agents. I have few questions. Can the PGs take those questions? Shall I do it after discussion or now only, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And sir, we do it. We, another yeah. five minutes, you can share the questions. Sir. How can we reduce the compound A production? One. Then how much amount of gas is taken by the gas analyzer per minute? What is the significance of this? Third, this will be usually asked in the exam. Describe the circle system. Add a note on low flow anesthesia. Define low flow anesthesia. How you conduct low flow anesthesia? These are the few questions I want to share. Uh, the, uh, not only you can answer the questions are the uh, how much amount of gas taken by the gas analyzer per minute was this its significance and how can you reduce the compound A production. I request the residents to type your answers in the chat box. We will, uh, we will read your answers. Meanwhile, uh, I thank Professor Ravi Bhatt for your such a elaborative and uh, descriptive presentation on low flow anesthesia and closed circuit system. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure all the delegates would have been highly benefited from your presentation. Uh, there are a couple of queries in the chat box. Before we take up uh, these queries, may I uh, request uh, Professor Reddy, sir, if he can speak yes, few yes. words on the presentation. Um. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Bhatt. It was an elaborative lecture on every aspect of low flow anesthesia. So the thing is, uh, PG should understand now low flow anesthesia is a safe technique in experienced hands with modern anesthesia machines and vaporizer inside the circuit and uh, gas monitoring is available nowadays. Um, so you have explained every step actually. So low flow anesthesia is basically any fresh gas flow less than alveolar ventilation. So we explained the phases of low flow anesthesia, advantages, disadvantages, and the monitoring requirements as well. Um, so everyone should understand that we should have very good monitoring. Otherwise, we may deliver the hypoxic gas mixture. Uh, so we should have the oxygen analyzer and CO2 analyzer to prevent the hypercapnia. And the ventilator should be a modern one, which can deliver the tidal volume irrespective of the flow rate. 
and we should also have the uh, end tidal gas monitoring as well. So advantages as told by Dr. Ravi, but it is economical, less O2 pollution, and it will pre pre preserve the heat and humidity. So it was a nice lecture, sir. So we can, uh, the only concern is, can we use in pediatric anesthesia? Few people ask me. Yes, we can use in pediatric anesthesia. But only question they asked is because we use uh, uncuffed ET tubes, it yeah. may lead to leaks. So, but if you are using uh, ascending uh, bellow type of ventilator, you will come to know the what is the leak. In our setup, we are using low flow anesthesia, but we keep a, a flow of about 0.8 liters in pediatric patients. Even with LMA, we use low flow anesthesia, pediatric okay. patients. But uh, we, will, uh, we are very vigilant in monitoring the uh, leaks and uh, other parameters. And the other thing is uh, accumulation of the toxic compounds. Yes, sir. Uh, probably we can flush the circuit yes, uh, sir. Uh, frequently and then uh, we can avoid that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't have any monitoring for that, uh, but, uh, for the toxic gas concentration. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The other thing the PG should understand is time constant, which is very important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When there is a um, long time constant, they, that will immediately lead to the um, slow induction as well as slow emergence. So thank probably you, we can go to the questions. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Reddy, sir, for your vital inputs. Uh, Professor Bhat, sir, can I take uh, two queries from the chat box? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. The first query is, can you please explain about a 0 0.012 atmosphere taken for Broder's formula? Yes, sir. Just a minute, sir. I will share the screen. What they asked? Uh, the why 0 0.012 0 atmosphere is taken for Broder's formula. What is the significance? Just a minute, sir. What the what is the ask? What is the question, sir? Brody's formula, sir. Hello. Uh, 0 0.012 atmosphere is taken in the Brody's formula. Uh, what is uh, why is it taken, or what is the significance of it? The question is seems to be a bit incomplete. I would request the yeah. uh, delegate to kindly be elaborative on the question again. Meanwhile, I can take the second question. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. How, do, how do you go about initial phase when using air instead of nitrous in low flow anesthesia? I briefed it, I think. Uh, in the initial phase, uh, uh, we are avoiding nitrous oxide. So we don't have to concentrate on the high uptake of nitrous oxide. Well, already we have done the pre-oxygenation and we have to concentrate only on the uptake of inhalational agents. We have to concentrate on the developing the MAC. Uh, we can keep a high dial concentration. We can keep a moderately high flows, like we can keep a two liters per minute also is good enough. And we can achieve the desired MAC. We are here, we don't have the contribution of the nitrous oxide. So we have to give, uh, give the 1.2 into MAC of the agent we have to achieve end tidal concentration of 1.2 into MAC of the agent we should achieve. I think uh, they are clear with I, I, Yeah, I hope it's clear to the person who has asked it. Thank you so much, sir, for responding yes. to the query. Yes. Uh, another query, is there any decrease in the extubation time with low flow anesthesia as compared to high flow anesthesia? Is there any change in the extubation time? Uh, there is no change in the extubation time because it depends upon the uh, uptake and elimination of the volatile anesthetic, it is uh, uh, the whatever is taken up by the body, we are replacing even in the low flow anesthesia. That's why there is no decrease in the time for extubation with low flow anesthesia. Sir, so can we use spontaneous mode for low flow anesthesia? Another query. <laughs> A spontaneous mode, I, we can use spontaneous mode, but uh, we should be 
more vigilant with a spontaneous mode of ventilation but we are not keeping so very low flow we can keep 1 liter total flow and we can allow spontaneous ventilation in the patient we have to look at the uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen concentration if there is free breathing uh, with spontaneous ventilation with very high ventilation we have to increase the flows there may be some leaks and there may be some rebreathing thank you so much sir that comes with a cautionary advice of monitoring the oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration so the next query is what is system volume in time constant uh, system volume is the total volume of the uh, circuit the reservoir bag or the ventilator and the carbon dioxide absorber what the modern anesthesia machines have a total system uh, plus a total uh, circuit volume of 4 liters the system volume is circuit volume plus frc of the patient that is 2 liters of frc sir so the first question has come back again with some explanation huh. so you had quoted one example of uh, around 5000 into 1.4 into 0.0128 huh. is equal to 90 ml per minute so the person has not understood what is 0.012 atmosphere here yes 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 that is the 1.2 mac of isoprene i have taken it as 0.018 atmosphere it is okay. uh, given in the millers you can read it in the square root of time in the millers anesthesia chapter uh, uptake and uh, distribution of uh, volatile anesthetic agents you can read it in that chapter you will understand better okay sir thank you so much sir sir the final query is how frequently should the soda line be changed uh, in cases with low flow anesthesia uh, the you have the indicators in the when the, the indicator change is there and there is a, the sodalam is exhausted but you can look at the rebreathing of the carbon dioxide if there is a rebreathing of 3 to 4 then you can change the sodalam dr yes, ravi thank you sir i yes, i will just elaborate on this part the question yes. asked how frequently now there is a different setups you go to the obstetric setup majority of the cases that are done under the regional yes the sir it yes, yes. is hardly used the soda lime is hardly used majority of the other centers where you can get a long surgery is continuous is being used that soda lime na so yeah. there is a variability and a difference in the usage of the soda lime soda lime yes sir so i think the indicators as well as your etco2 these are the best parameters which can help you in saving the cost also in at least helping in the uh, better quality of delivery of gases to the patient also yes so it varies you can't have a fixed time that this is the life period the shelf life of soda line so it depends upon the how many how many cases uh, your institution or hospital is carrying out and you should have a very clear uh, whatever you can call have a check test of your uh, ventilator circuits with a closed circuit so that you will be able to know about the level of carbon dioxide being generated by the patient and being monitored by the etc2 as well as the indicator i think these are the best parameters otherwise there is no fixed rule that it has to be changed after this much yeah if any institute has a policy to change a fixed day it's better to change on the month, every monday after a holiday of sunday if it lying dormant for many days yes sir yes sir i think is better because there can be accumulation of the harmful some yes. materials also which i think may not be tested to the laboratory what type of mat, uh, materials are getting accumulated and which type of gases can you know generate when the carbon dioxide and temperature and moisture comes to that soda line so i think those are a chemical reaction it's very difficult to define um, fixed rule is not there but i think many places they have got their own institutional protocols and to change it maybe after one month whether it's like been exhausted or not maybe after two months maybe after three months depending upon the again the number of surgeries being undertaken under general anesthesia thank you so much sir uh, uh, sir one last query has uh, come again if a patient is on low flow anesthesia uh, can peep be used liberally sir what is the question sir 
Peep. In low flow anesthesia, can PEEP be used liberally? Positive and expiratory pressure. Yes, you can use for now positive and expiratory pressure with uh, low flow anesthesia. Sir, sir, uh, if you can finally respond to the uh, in brief the two uh, questions which you had put for the audience. The how can yes. we reduce the compound A production and the other one? Fine, then we will end, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. What is the fresh gas flow uh, taken by the gas analyzer? It's about 200 ml per minute. But if you keep a uh, fresh gas flow of 500 ml per minute and 200 ml is taken up by the gas analyzer, what will happen? Here, the fresh uh, the, whatever the uh, gas taken by the gas analyzer will be returned to the circuit. That we have to remember. I hope I am clear for this question. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Clear, clear, okay. clear. And finally, you can tell the brief points. How can we reduce the compound A production? Yeah, the well, one is use of uh, uh, soda lines, which have very minimal amount of sodium hydroxide. The uh, second one is the use of the newer uh, carbon dioxide absorbents like MSOR. These are the uh, with these things you can reduce the formation of compound A. However, the uh, compound A is not a very much concern in humans, uh, as you know, I think. Thank you so much, sir. I think we are done with all the queries and we are past cross 8, 8 p.m. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful illustrative talk and thank you, audience, for participation. I, I now forward to uh, Dr. Bajwa, sir. Well, thank you very uh, much. Thank you, Dr. Ankur. Uh, Dr. So Ravi, uh, can you stop sharing a screen so that we yes, can sir. have a larger view of the entire screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's fine. So, it was really a very absorbing deliberation by Dr. Ravi and equally supported by Dr. Ramakshan Reddy, sir. Actually, whatever has been discussed, I think uh, that's a little more than textbook also. And I think PG will definitely benefit benefit from that. And continuing to this thing uh, from the low flow anesthesia, there are certain queries which, which were answered very beautifully by Dr. Ravi. We will take it forward to the next class also where we can have uh, this one mechanical ventilation as well as the intraoperative ventilation strategies where these things can be discussed again because we are having the continuation of all these classes uh, so that the students should be able to memorize the previous class also they can almost like a revision it's a continuation of all the classes so for my uh, heartful thanks to dr ramakrishna reddy sir who is so tired that uh, he reached last night and is still at a time after attending to his duties in the morning to chair the session and dr ravi also who has been you know getting struggling to bring the zoom to his own room it was quite a struggle. I think sometimes these technical glitches are out of our control and uh, we are not a technical expert, but still we managed to still come on time. Uh, slightly late, I think 10 minutes is okay. And there are so many senior people here who have been giving the suggestions and uh, it's very heartwarming that it's, the classes are for PG student and the seniors people are always participating. Uh, for another two, three minutes, I just welcome if any senior person wants to give their suggestion, it's uh, most welcome. The idea is to always improve these classes and to get more interactive sessions. Any senior person, they can raise hand or they can unmute themselves so that uh, they can participate in the discussion or they can ask any, so give a suggestion also. Please, anybody. One has to unmute himself or herself to come to the for the any suggestion or anything else. Can we have a hypoventilation with low flow anesthesia? Dr. Ravi, question for you from Dr. Shobha Watkar, madam. Unmute yourself, Dr. Ravi, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, hyperventilation. Huh? Hypo, I am talking about hypo or hyper. Okay. Which one is a beneficial for hypotensive anesthesia? Uh, we can have hypo or hyperventilation. 
for hypotensive anesthesia yeah uh, we have to increase the anesthetic agent concentration in yes. the alveoli for that we have to either hyperventilate the patient or we have to increase the dial concentration or we have to increase the fresh gas right okay okay thank you sir anybody else wants to add or want to ask anything i think uh, our time has also today because of certain technical problem we cross a little time today uh, it was a beautiful class i really thank from my heart to dr ramakrishna reddy sir and dr ravi bhat again and uh, glad that dr ankur uh, handled the entire show in a very well mannered sophisticated and modified manner also in between so we continue our class the next monday and uh, i have taken all the suggestions which have been given in this class so that we can come with uh, newer modalities of the i think that was a good suggestion about the long cases are being discussed on a exam going basis i think that's a good suggestion we will start with that also and uh, with the two three uh, teachers sitting so that they can give their good inputs about so it become easier for the students to face the examination and uh, thank you all and uh, thank you all the seniors all the faculty members all the delegates and all the pg students who have attended this class so with this uh, we will i just want to say goodbye and good night to everybody we will meet next monday at 6:30 pm so thank you sir and uh, jay yes long live is